I'm stepping over dogs as I do this. But anyway, I got this nice gift from uh, the Cogswells here, Ty and Michelle. Michelle made this thing, so I figured it would only, only right that I christen this wonderful roach clip on the air. And you can see that there's a little skull hanging from the end there, and there's beads and shit. Mm. It's the little things I appreciate. Nice little roach clip. Some weed. And whatever. Oh, and by the way, speaking of weed, you know, I said, like, Friday the 16th is my birthday, and... If you want to do something for my birthday that's nice, do something nice for somebody. You know, throw a can of dog food to a shelter, feed somebody that's hungry, um, don't trip over dogs like that when it's leaving. These dogs have been on me all day today and all day yesterday because of what was going on, so they haven't left my side. But anyway, if you want to do something for me personally, uh, send me something green in the mail, because um, this state sucks, it's draconian and nothing's legal. Right. I figure, while indulging in weed, why not talk about a movie with weed from 1949? Something called Wild Weed, or the alternate title, She Should Have Said No. Story of my life on that one, but anyway, they always say no. But anyway, um, this was a roadshow picture. Uh... Intent on showing us the evils of marijuana, and it was starring Lila Leeds. Now, Lila Leeds was the subject of a huge bust back in the day, including Robert Mitchum. And there was some speculation that she was throwing these marijuana parties, and she sort of wanted somebody high profile there, and Mitch was there, and they were busted, and everybody went to jail, and everybody thought it would ruin Mitch's career, but it didn't. It sort of elevated it, for lack of better words. Uh, Lila is a different story. She wound up in jail. She wound up getting into deeper and deeper drugs. And it seems that this film might have been her way to get out of the whole thing, redemption or whatever, but it doesn't work out that way. Um, Lila was a good-looking woman, a blonde in the Marilyn Monroe vein. Um, and she actually lived uh, into her 70s. Uh, never got any real high-profile roles, but you know, Wild Weed or They Should Have Said No is sort of like a landmark thing because it, it, they take this seriously. Uh, the government was involved in this. Lyle, um, what the hell was Lyle Talbot plays the policeman. Um, weirdly, um, Leo Gorsi's brother David shows up as Lila's brother who commits suicide when he finds out that she's involved with the evil weed. And the evil weed is evil in this one. <laughs> It's evil. I mean, how fucking evil is it that the fucking joints are the size of Tipperillo cigars and they're smuggled in canned tomatoes as joints, not loose marijuana. There are these big brown fucking stogies and they're called sticks. And you can get three sticks for $4.95, uh, otherwise $5 because the dealer, Marky, will be in the soda shop and will leave three joints in the coin return slot of the payphone for you to uh, peruse. But anyway, he sort of hangs out this sleaze ball at um, this uh, dance place, and he gets the dancers hooked on the evil weed of marijuana. And he's got especially uh, an eye for Lila because she's hot. Or actually, her name in the, in the film is Anne. She's this innocent little girl who's dancing to put her brother through school, and because she goes out with Marky and gets fucked up and becomes a party girl, she gets fired. So she becomes his dealer. Now the way this works is they invite people over to um, their house and she walks around with like a fucking little tray of fucking joints and sells them for $2 each or three for five. That's a fucking bargain even today. And like I said, these, these joints are like fucking weird. And the shit that these people do after smoking this shit, well, man, I just wish it affected me that way. So of course there's the main guy, uh, the evil dealer, 
What was his name? I forgot what his name was. Shit. I'm really on my stuff. What the fuck was his name? Oh, man, I don't even know. Whatever. There's so many weird people. I only remember Lyle Talbert because of, uh, you know, his B-movie background. But Mr. Big, the main man, has a henchman named Raymond who was Jack Elam. And Jack only has a couple of lines, but he says them with a great deal of menace. And this isn't Jack's first film. Um, Jack did a Western prior to this, and after this, a couple other ones. Um, I believe the story was that um, Jack was a studio accountant, and he had been blinded in one eye as a result of a childhood fight, and his doctors told him that his chosen profession would eventually make him go blind. So he did a trade-off. He did some work in return to be in three pictures, and he never looked back. So he's a thug in this one. He's the henchman, Raymond the henchman. But anyway... The whole thing goes down, and Anne's locked up in this cell for 60 days, and she freaks out and has mental breakdowns and is put in a straitjacket, psychosis. I mean, all this from smoking pot. Damn. I've been smoking pot for over 50 years. Nobody ever put me in a damn straitjacket, nor did I have psychosis. I just have a problem finding the shit. But anyway, especially around here, never in New York. But anyway, um... Anne gets out of jail and decides to, after her brother committed suicide, after walking in and seeing her smoking the evil weed and selling the evil weed, he hung himself in the garage. And to be honest with you, if I looked like him, he's got like a triangular shaped head with a fucking weird hairdo, I would have hung myself in the garage. But anyway, now Anne is going to do something. Um, she's going to go undercover. Da, 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 da. And she brings one of the detectives in who poses as a big dealer, and bup -ba -da -bup -bup -bup, they're going to bust Mr. Big. And they bust Mr. Big, and they bust Marky. And, you know, it ends with Anne talking into the camera while this thing's scrolling off about the evils of marijuana and how over two, 200,000 people in this country were addicted to marijuana, and that leads you to heroin, opium, and all this other good shit. Fuck no, it doesn't. Even in the worst fucking of times, it only leads you to pizza and donuts. That's all. You know, what bullshit, and it's more bullshit that, you know, the federal government, in their infinite wisdom, is supposedly going to decriminalize this whole thing because the fucking thing's a joke. It was hooked onto a rider to a bill by Hearst and DuPont, who, you know, basically hemp they made rope out of in paper, and Hearst wanted wood to make paper out of, ruining our trees. And... DuPont came up with nylon rope, so we can't make rope out of hemp. So they put a rider on a bill, and it, well, actually it wasn't declared as a narcotic until the 50s. So, and it's still declared as a narcotic. Uh, like I said, in this draconian state, it's not available yet. But in other states, it is. So the only thing you got to watch out for is if the federal government decides to not decriminalize it and decides to crack down, everybody's a sitting fucking duck. How wonderful is that? But, yeah, it's fucked up. And there was a bunch of these films out there, you know, that basically, you know, uh, marijuana, the weed with its roots in hell. Um, I found it very beneficial. Um, other people have, too. That's why they're trying to legalize it. It has medical uses and shit like that. But, you know, we go back to the days when completely illegal in this film, sort of like the, 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 you know, that type of thing. But, you know, I can remember, you know, you can get a four-finger ounce back in 1972 for 20 bucks. That shows you something. And then they brought in this stuff called Colombian, which was going to be $50 an ounce, and we all bitched about that until we smoked it. And went, wow, that is really worth 50 bucks. So, I mean, I could do a long story, you know, segment on my fucking weed use and shit like that. The other funny thing about this is, now... Okay, in this one, they, they take a puff like this. It's really fucking weird. And they told her to take three puffs. After two puffs, she's fucking whacked. That never happened back then for the simple reason why, you know, going back into the, the late 60s, early 70s, people that used pot were called potheads. And there was a reason for that because you had to build up a head for it. I mean... The first time I tried it, and to be honest with you, I was anti-drug going up in high school. You know, my father was a pharmacist. He was friends with the cops. He used to identify drugs for him. So, yeah, you, that's bad. It's going to do all kinds of bad shit to you. Well, once I got out of high school and got into college and people were doing this shit, I'm like, you know, so there's got to be something to it. 
So I bought a nickel bag back then, which would have been, I don't know, container like that full of weed for $5. And it was green and it had seeds and stems in it. So first night, roll myself a joint, smoke it, nothing happens. Third night, roll a joint, nothing happens. Now I'm, I'm getting up, it's been five nights now, I skipped. Friday, I'm like, okay, this is it, last chance, this stuff sucks, smoke it, get whacked. The whole thing is it had, it had a buildup in your system, like the psychiatric drugs they give you today where you have to take them for three weeks before they actually start to work and you can't get off them. Similar to that, it had a buildup in your system, now, now it actually did something to you. So that's what it was called, you know, building up uh, a head for it. So when you go back to, you know, she should have said no, I mean, and they're blitzed. That would happen maybe with today's weed, but not with yesterday's weed, because yesterday's weed wasn't potent at all as much as today's weed is. So, um, yeah. yeah. So that's it for today. A quick little film that I watched on the sneak yesterday that I forgot about, because I really didn't want to turn on the TV or deal with what was going on yesterday. So, um, we will get into some stuff deeper into the week, but again, I thank Ty and Michelle for this wonderful gift, which I will use to its uh, fulfillest until it cannot be used anymore. So again, I thank you. And for the rest of you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for telling your friends. And we'll catch you on the flip side with more fun.